Okay, let's go to case number three. This is a young male with acute confusion and extra pyramidal symptoms. And I'm showing you a uh, ADC map through the basal ganglia and a mid-sagittal T1-weighted image without gadolinium. Give you a couple of seconds to look at the findings there. You ready for the first question? No? Yes? Everybody's very quiet. Okay. Guess you're ready. Question number one. Which is the least likely cause for the findings shown here? A, methanol intoxication. B, carbon monoxide intoxication. C, deep venous thrombosis. D, crossover Yakov disease. And E, a mitochondrial disorder. Which is the least likely cause? Okay, let's see the answer. And the majority of you said crossbow Yakov disease. Well, that could be okay. The venous thrombosis, let's see. I think the least likely cause is carbon monoxide because all of the other entities may involve your basal ganglia in a diffuse fashion, but carbon monoxide in the majority of the cases involves only the globi pallidi, particularly the medial aspect of the globi pallidi. In this case, you see involvement of both the medial aspect of the globi pallidi bilaterally, but also the lateral aspect of the globi pallidi. And in this pathological image, image, which is not of the same patient, you see also involvement of the medial and lateral globi pallidi. But in the majority of cases, the pattern of involvement when you have carbon monoxide intoxication is restricted to only the globi pallidi and not the rest of the basal ganglia. So let's go on to question number two. And in the inferior aspect of the screen, I'll show you the same uh, ADC map that I showed you before, but I'm showing you an additional image, an MR venogram. And the question is, based on the study shown here, what is the diagnosis? A, diffuse cerebral anoxia. B, a mitochondrial disorder. C, crossbow Jacob. D, deep venous thrombosis. And E, methanol intoxication. Which is the diagnosis, guys? Okay, let's take a look at the answer. And the majority of you said deep venous thrombosis, and it's pretty obvious from the MR venogram that the deep venous system is missing. You don't see the thalamus triad veins, you don't see the internal cerebral veins, venogalin, straight sinus, uh, basal vein of Rosenthal. You just don't see any of those structures, and those structures actually are the ones that drain the central aspect of the brain, as illustrated here on this ADC map, in which you see this restricted diffusion involving the basal ganglia and also the lateral aspect of the thalamite. So venous thrombosis is a fairly common diagnosis. We uh, seem to make it on a weekly basis. The venous thrombosis is well seen on the T1-weighted images and on the MR venograms. Uh, there are certain predisposing factors. We know them quite well, sinus and ear infections, contraceptives, particularly younger females that take oral contraceptives and smoke, uh, trauma. Dehydration tends to be particularly important in children and babies. Radiation, collagen vascular disorders, coagulopathies, meningitis, cancer, many cancers are hypercoagulable states, and at the end stage of the cancer, the patients are not eating well or not drinking well, and they may get the uh, cerebral thrombosis. Also meningioma, obviously when the meningioma is extending into one of the sinuses and invading it. The sinuses that are most commonly affected are the sagittal and transverse sinus, uh, and the deep uh, deno, venous system may be affected more commonly in children and adults, but it may also happen in adults like I show you in this case. And if we have accompanying um, thrombosis of the cortical veins, we will have infarcts in the norarterial distributions. They may be uh, blood, they may have, be, have blood, they may be hemorrhagic. They tend to be parasagittal because the most common sinus involved by thrombosis in its adjacent veins is the superior sagittal sinus. And curiously, they behave a little bit different than the arterial infarcts. They tend to have variable enhancement and variable signal intensity on the diffusion weighted uh, imaging uh, studies. So here's a differential diagnosis for this case, methanol intoxication involving the basal ganglia bilaterally, also the uh, frontal and posterior white matter and gray matter in these patients that uh, uh, present acutely with blindness due to a necrosis of the optic nerves. Wilson's disease involving the basal ganglia, but particularly the lateral aspect of the putamina, and in this case also the gray matter in the subinsular region, the claustrum in that case. Lay's disease, a disorder of children due to a mitochondrial disorder involving the basal ganglia, but also involves the subcortical white matter and the periaqueductal gray matter. Here we have a case of anoxia. We already saw several cases of anoxia. In this case, you see diffuse involvement of the 
cortex, as well as involvement of the basal ganglia and the thalami bilaterally. Next differential diagnosis, Kwatsko-Yakov disease, high signal intensity in the basal ganglia, bilaterally and symmetrically, seen better on diffusion-weighted images, but also quite well seen on flare images. You may also have involvement of the cortex, particularly in the medial aspect of the hemispheres, in this case, in the frontal aspect, but may also happen in the occipital region.